Good afternoon everyone, I am Mr. Rish. Thank you for joining me for this video. Since we now know how to do integration of polynomials, it makes perfect sense to look at the derivation of the parallelogram area using integral of polynomials. Very quickly, you know what a parallelogram looks like. If you were to draw it out like an x and y axis, you'd be looking at a shape which looks something like this. And because the parallelogram can be split into two equal triangles, always two equal triangles, and each triangle has a half base times height area formula you multiply by the two triangles then you get base times height so we know automatically that the area of a parallelogram must always equal to base times height all we have to do is use integral calculus to derive that the procedure for deriving this parallelogram area begins with a diagram such as this you have to draw it such that you can come up with some good coordinate pairs if i draw a length from here to here i can draw an equal length up or there connect all of these using parallel diagonal lines and I've gotten a parallelogram. I know this point right here is 0 comma 0. This right here is minus b comma 0. If I'm b units away from the origin, I must be b units away on the other side. And this right here is 0 comma h and this right here will be b comma h. In this video, we're going to look at things in terms of dx and dy. Therefore, we must be thinking about top boundary curves, bottom boundary curves, right and left sides. Therefore, we must be thinking about equations of all of these lines that you see. This line over here is easy, it's just y equals 0. This line here on the top is easy, it's y equals h because it's going, the horizontal line is going through 0 comma h intercept. But you know these lines here have a defined domain. This is from minus b to 0, this is from 0 to b. We must determine the equation of this line which is a y equals mx plus b, but think about it, you have b, h, and 0, comma, 0, you can do change in y divided by change in x, the slope formula, you get m is equal to here, h over b. The equation of this line will be h over b, x. There's no y intercept other than this origin. y equals h over b, x, or you can say in terms of x, it's b over h, y. These are equations that will, co will come in handy. We must determine the equation of this line. If this right here is parallel to that, they must have the same slope. The equation of this line will be y is equal to h x over b plus h because you have a y intercept right here. In terms of x, the same equation will become what? It will become x is equal to y minus h times b over h. You're just solving for x. And here's your other equation. Now we have all the relevant equations which are in the circles to do this in terms of dx and dy. To do it in terms of dy is easier and you'll see why. If you're looking at something in terms of area with regards to y, you're looking at, in this instance, from a lower interval to upper interval, 0 to h, you're looking at x right minus xl dy. Here's my x right, here's my x left. So we have our template over here, x right minus x left. We just have to input those equations from 0 to h. What's my right side equation? It's this by over h minus what's my left side equation is this all of this b over h times y minus h all with respect to dy you can open this up and let's do it from h up to zero we have by over h minus we'll open this up and this with the effect of the signs we'll have a by over h these h's will cancel out and you just have plus b with respect to dy this cancels out very easily making everything so easy and this b can come out as a coefficient so you're looking at something like this. When you integrate this you know what you're going to get, you'll just get a y, the variable y because you have y to the power of 0, you do n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, you do the effect of b times h, this coming in here and this coming here and the difference of the two, minus b times 0, bh minus b0, this zeroes out so you just end up having bh as being the area. So the area of this parallelogram with respect to dy is just bh and it's true. Now let's look at the same derivation using dx. When you're doing integration with respect to dx, you have to look at intervals along a horizontal line. We have an interval from here minus b to 0 and then from 0 to b. And in each instance, we have a top boundary curve, a lower boundary curve, a top boundary curve, and a lower boundary curve. So we have two sets of integrals which come into play over here. From minus b up to 0, from this point to this point, this right here is my top boundary curve, which is what? hx over b plus h minus, here's my lower boundary curve, which is a 0, meaningless, plus from 0 up to b, I have this top boundary curve, which is a horizontal line, y equals h minus, and then I have this slant, 
line which is h x over b d x let's make some changes over here i don't like a variable down here and i like to have the zero down i'll take the minus b up i'll bring the zero down but i must put a minus to do that change this minus zero is meaningless we don't need to worry about it everything else looks straightforward so remember in this instance we have a top boundary curve right over here y t and then we have a y b over here here we have a top boundary curve right here and a lower boundary curve Hence, from minus b to zero, we have this setup. And then from zero to this b, we have this setup. So it's a little bit more involved. Let's integrate this, because it's easy. Everything here is with respect to x. Integration of this will be h x squared over two b plus h x. And then we have a minus here, minus b and zero plus. Here will become an h x, here will become minus h x squared over two b from b and zero. Let's plug in the minus b and the b into places of x. We don't even bother plugging in zeros because they have no effect. Here we'll get a h b squared over two b minus h b plus h b minus, here we're plugging in the b's, h b squared over two b. All we have to do is simplify this and let's simplify this. Let's open up this parentheses. When I open up this parentheses, this minus becomes a part of this hb square over 2b and this becomes a positive. And then we can eliminate this parentheses, we can eliminate this parentheses right over here. So what can we do over here? We can simplify these. I have a 2b and a b square, it just becomes a hb over 2 because you can simplify the b's that way. I have a minus hb over 2 and a minus hb over 2 which is equal to a what? Minus hb. These are just saying two halves are equal to a full whole. Minus hb. I have hb plus hb that's plus 2hb. Minus 1 plus 2 is a positive 1 and my area becomes hb or you can say area is equal to base times height which is how I like to say b first and then h later on. And that's exactly what we were looking for here with regards to the derivation. So remember when you're looking at this derivation scheme using dx and dy, the dy is easier because you're looking at the right boundary curve and the left boundary curve and only two equations, one interval, easy. When you're looking at the dx, you have two sets of upper and lower boundary, upper and lower boundary, so you have two intervals and slightly more involved, but either way it works. And everything begins with you drawing the parallelogram in this manner so you can come up with these good points and then you can easily determine these equations. That's it what I wanted to show you for this video because this was an excellent point in our video scheme and our video course over here to bring this up because we now know how to do integral calculus at the integral polynomial level. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.